Um, there's not bed bugs, but there's hella dust behind this. All right, now that the hotel room has been checked, <laughs> I wanted to check in with you all. Hello. <laughs> Today we are in beautiful, lovely Montreal. <laughs> I came here for the first time just last August and fell so in love with the city and knew I wanted to make my way back here and see it in winter just because I know it's a very different vibe than summertime and I'm so excited to be here and i just feel ready to eat and have a good time <laughs> So we've made it back to the hotel. It's only like 7 p.m., but I'm pretty sure that I'm just gonna tuck in for the rest of the evening. And it's gonna be like a really just like nice cozy night in, which I like, especially like traveling alone, like maybe in general, but also like traveling alone as a woman. It's like, I don't necessarily like being out super late at night most of the time. I feel like everywhere I've gone, I felt very safe and, you know, I keep my wits about me, but I just feel more comfortable exploring and stuff when it's light out and there's people milling around and that happens less and less as it gets darker and especially like in winter where it's just cold and not as many people are out and about. So yeah, I'm gonna probably have lots of nights in like this, but I'm kind of looking forward to it. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Pussy Riot exhibit that I saw earlier today. Um, I could be wrong, but I think it was at the Musée d'Art Contemporain. <laughs> I went to the exhibit like not really having expectations of what it would be about and not knowing too much about like Pussy Riot and their work as activists and artists. So this was sort of my first in true encounter with their work. Personally, I found it like very heartening and inspiring in a few ways to 
learn about like all that they've done. I really admire the members of this group's ability to turn like their frustration, their sadness, their fear almost of like, you know, like of I don't really want to see my country be like this. <laughs> I admire them being able to turn whatever those kind of like heavy, complicated emotions that they might have been feeling about things. Like, I admire that they were able to turn them into actual constructive action. And the second thing that I found really inspiring was not just that, oh, you know, they took to the streets, they took to like the physical world to try to express whatever these concerns that they had were to fight for what they believe in up against a rather oppressive regime even still like even when they were continually like arrested and threatened and followed and discouraged fined whatever punished in some way it's like somehow they found the will within them to continue to show up for the thing to not let themselves be so scared that they lose their voice or that they lose their courage to advocate for what they believe in and i think that that's a level of strength and bravery that is very admirable and probably only comes to a rare few just organically like without conscious efforting and maybe as you do it again and again it gets easier and maybe for some people it's not so conscious it's just who they are or it's how they were raised and so it gave them more freedom to be brave but i just really admired that and thought that that was so inspiring and impressive <laughs> i'm really really glad i went it was a good 10 canadian dollars spent <laughs> i think i'm kind of talked out at this point so i'll let you go i'll do my little evening things and then get to sleep and i don't really know what i'm gonna get into tomorrow but i'm really excited to take you along with me for the day and i will check in whenever it makes sense to check in again <laughs>
東京にはあるんですそういうところが何,何かこう非常にこう近代化していくものとずっとそのまま,そのまま取り残されてきて昔のままの姿があるものっていうのは非常にこの平山さん自身を象徴しているようなあの東京の風景だったような気がします。So clearly I'm back at the hotel. <laughs> I loved that movie. I gave it four out of five stars and a like, like a heart on my letterbox. So if that tells you anything, I really liked that. <laughs> I really love just like slice of life type of films where it's more of a character study than a super like tight plot. And I feel like the actor, who led the film was like just very compelling and like was very good at showing emotions that existed just below the surface and yeah and it was beautifully shot the sound design was really lovely i really liked it perfect days recommend <laughs> i recommend it but now i'm back at the hotel and i'm so so deeply hungry which is understandable considering i didn't eat so much out and about today and I stopped by just like a like a CVS type pharmacy for like looking for packaged ramen that I could heat up in the microwave here and I could not find a vegan one. So this is my dinner tonight. These little puffed peas. I've always wondered if it's actually made with green peas. Wow, the ingredients are pretty impressive. Green peas, canola oil, rice, salt, by like bicarb like baking soda and then rosemary but then i also have my donuts to try oh they smell really good um i just got a plain glazed and then an apple fritter i'm a very big donut connoisseur it's one of my top five favorite foods i feel or definitely like my second favorite dessert <laughs> I have a list and I love to try vegan donuts I've actually had these ones before I don't think they're my favorite but I do think that they're good and one thing I've learned in my trials of very many vegan donuts is that I feel as much as it's cool and fun and delightful to have a huge array of different flavor combinations a lot of the times, the ones I always go back to, the ones that always taste the best, are like the classic donuts. Um, so your glazed, your chocolate glazed, strawberry sprinkle, that family of flavors. And so that's what I went with today. I thought we would do a little taste test. Starting with the glaze, which this is kind of interesting. That bulb on it makes me kind of curious. It looks like it was almost in like a tin resting probably. Hmm. Okay, take this review with a grain of salt because I am eating these like several hours after I got them, but they are quite dry. And because they're dry, the bite is just a bit firmer. It's not as springy and bouncy and cloudy as I like my donuts to be, but <laughs> there is like really nice aeration in there uh i like a denser donut so this is like a good amount for me i don't want it to be so open that it's like eating nothing <laughs> you know um so i don't know 
I don't want to judge this too harshly again because I'm eating it so much later than when it was made and donuts are unfortunately like one of those baked goods that just gets less good the longer you let it sit after making it. I'll give it like a three and a half. I think it's fine. It's not blowing my mind and there are glazed donuts that have blown my mind. So trying the apple fritter, which is like the glaze, if you can see, kind of missing on some parts, which I don't like. <laughs> I feel like that's just as dry. <laughs> it's just as dry as the other one. But the cinnamon really comes through. It's a little bit like sweet in essence, which I think adds like a really nice, just like fall cozy warmth <laughs> to the fritter. And again, I think if it wasn't so dry, and in this case, if it was like fully glazed, there wasn't like a big bare spot then I would be totally content with this. It would be my favorite donut I've ever had in the world. No, that's Peaceful Provisions in Beacon, New York. And one day I will take you there, but I would be happy with these. They would satisfy my donut craving for sure. So I think that <laughs> for the rest of the night, I'm just gonna enjoy my snacky dinner, do a little bit of editing and then hit the hay and I'll see ya tomorrow. very snowy today. <laughs> I'm wearing heat tech. Both layers. I've only been doing it in the leggings, but today I've got on a heat tech top and I'm going to layer on top of this and <laughs> hope that it'll keep me warm. I think it'll be fine because I've been okay every day so far. I've not yet tested the top. I've not yet worn it in cold weather outside. So I'm really curious to see how it goes. <laughs> I'm here to report that museum fatigue, a term I just learned about <laughs> from TikTok, <laughs> is so deeply real. I feel like, 
maybe halfway through like going through the museum I was like I don't even care anymore like I just want to leave like I didn't really find any energy within me like looking at the pieces and I was just like grumpy <laughs> so I figured rather than trying to see the whole thing in one go I can save the rest of the museum for another trip and I'm taking myself to get a little pastry or dessert and drink of some kind and I can't wait <laughs> for a little treat. Yeah.